Hi, Code Monkey here. You know, when I was a kid, video games were just starting to come out when I was very, very young. When I was like two or three, they started coming out in pizza places or somewhere out in town, strip malls, uh, where you'd go and put a quarter in the machine. That was how it was done at the time. And then eventually they made their way into the home on home gaming consoles. And they were very simple, though. The first ones to come out were the Atari 2600, which was great at the time because it allowed for so many different games. And it had a joystick, which you'd move, and one button to push. But then they started to evolve very quickly. About 10 years later, the Nintendo NES came out which was revolutionary because it had a crossbar which you could not only use to move characters, but you could also use it to make menu selections, which wasn't really feasible before. It also had two buttons to give you more actions. So I thought it would be fun for our Ninja platform game to put in an on-screen NES-style controller. So let's get started. Code Monkey, get up, get coffee. Code Monkey, go to job. Now let's make our ninja move around. And I want to do that by an online controller. And that's why I left this blank space down here. And I'll just be using these graphics that are reminiscent of an old Nintendo controller. A simple cross pad for movement and some red buttons for jumping or whatever we want to put in the game. But I do want to be able to use this in other games, not just the ninja game. So that's why we'll make a new file over here in the JavaScript folder called gamepad.js. And we'll make a class, gamepad, and we'll extend the UI block. And the UI block is a lot like a container, except it doesn't have any physics on it. It's just a way to group objects together, sort of like the old group in Phaser 2 if you used that back then class gamepad and pass the super to the UI block. We will need to be passing some information to the gamepad, so we'll put in a simple config object to be passed. And even though it's an empty object right now, let's go ahead and place it in. This gamepad equals new gamepad, and we'll go ahead and pass in the scene being this. And let's link it in our index.html file as well. And let's load in some of the images that we're going to be needing. Let's load in the cross. This load image. Cross. And the path is images. Controls. Cross.png. And let's go ahead and load in the red button as well. Now I'm going to try something here. I hadn't planned on doing this, but let's try to pass in the align grid as well to here. So scene this and grid is this a grid. So now back in the game pad, we can say this scene equals config scene and this grid equals config grid. Let's go ahead and add in the cross, this scene, because we've got to add it on the scene. The UI block or any object doesn't have the ability to add images to it. We have to do that on the scene. This scene, add image, and zero, zero, cross. Let's run it, check for errors. And there's our big cross up there. The red button is not being found, so I'll go back and check that path because I didn't put the controls folder there. Okay, good. Let's scale that cross down and we'll put it on a variable this cross, a line, scale to game width, this cross, and let's make it 20% of the screen's width. There we go. So let's put that at number 12 down here, because what we're doing here is we're using the align grid to line everything up inside the container, well, the UI block, which is sort of a container light. And then we're going to be moving that down here to the bottom after everything is positioned inside. So let's try that. 
I haven't done it this way before, but I think it'll work. This grid, place that index, 12, this cross. There we go. And we'll put the red buttons over here at 18 and 20. This button 1 equals this scene, add image, 0, 0, red button, and I imagine we're going to have to scale that as well. We'll go ahead and leave it at 20%. Here we go. Let's bring it down just a bit. And I'll just copy all this to make button 2. And place that at number 20. There we go. That's the start of the controller that I knew and loved way back when. Now, how are we going to press the cross? Because it is one image. Well, there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could check the X and Y position of where it was clicked. But an easier way to do it, it may seem a bit hacky, is to put invisible buttons over each area of the cross. And there's a file here called Hidden, which is just a white square. And we're going to lay that white square over each section of the cross and then turn the alpha down. Back in Scene Main here, let's load that image in. This Load image, hidden, and then back in gamepad. Let's make some space down here to do that. So this button up is going to be our first hidden button. This scene, add image, zero, zero, hidden. And then let's place that button up, exact position of the cross. But instead of using the align grid, let's use the cross to find where we need to put the button. So we can say this cross X, because it does need to be on the same X coordinate right in the middle of the cross. But this cross Y is also going to put it in the middle of the cross. There it is, but it needs to go up. So minus this cross display height. I think that is going to be needed to be divided by 2, but let's see. Yes, so that's too far up. So this cross display height divided by 2. And there. Perfect. So whenever the user pushes there, we're going to know it needs to go up. Let's make our button down now. We can just copy this line. Change it to button down and add in the display height divided by 2 instead. Great. Now for button left and button right, button left, button right, it needs to be on the same Y position as the cross. But for the left button, we subtract half of the display width and add it on the other. And the reason we're doing it by half of the display width or display height is because the sprite here of the cross, the image of the cross rather, has an origin of 0, 0. So if you put it exactly at 0, 0, the button or whatever else would go here. Because it's at 0, 0 for both X and Y origins, that means half of the sprite is sticking out to the left, and half of it is going out to the right. So if you want to find the edge, you take the X position and add in the half the width, or subtract half the width, depending on which side you want to find. So basically that's it, because half of the image is sticking over that half, since everything starts at 0, 0. Negative numbers are here, and positive numbers are to the right. Great, there's all of our buttons right there. So now we just need to hook those up. This button up. Set interactive. And we'll do that for all the buttons in here.
and then we add listeners to them. So this button up, on, pointer down, this go up and bind it to this, this being the gamepad. Go up and console log go up. Now I'm going to speed ahead and do this for the rest of the buttons. There, now I've set up all the buttons to be interactive and I've set them up with listeners and I've hooked it up to some console logs. So let's check it out. Go right, go left, go down, go up, button one pressed and button two pressed. They should really be button A and B. That's how it was uh, laid out by Nintendo. Now let's go ahead and move that down to the bottom. Ah, but we haven't added them to the block yet. So if we don't do that, it won't go anywhere. So this add, this button up, and then do that for all of the buttons. Now let's change the Y position on our gamepad. This gamepad, Y equals, and this is just for testing, say 400. See if that moves it down. Everything except the cross, so that means we did not add the cross into the block. This cross it wasn't a button, so I wasn't paying attention. Here we go. And I think we can get away with placing it at number 99. We may need to scale things, though. This A grid, place it index 99, this gamepad. Let's try that. Move it up 11, because moving it up 11 moves it up one row, since there are 11 columns. I think we'll bring it up just a bit more. Let's try 77. Now that is reaching into the game area. So what we can do, we can't scale the whole block, but we can scale the cross a little bit. So we'll put it at 0.15. And you see the hidden buttons there. Because we're doing it on the height and width of the cross, when we shrink that, they still stay in position. Let's put the gamepad back down at 88. Right up, down, left. Great. Now let's just put in the control back. This load image, control back. Images, controls, control back, dot PNG. And that's going to be the first one that we add. Otherwise, it'll go on top of everything. We'll scale the back to 100% of the game's width. And let's set the origin of that to 0, 0. and add it in. This add back. Let's refresh. For some reason we got it sticking up over the edge here. So to fix that we'll do it to 1.1%, 110% of the width. And that still didn't fix it so let's add it in to the Y at negative 20. negative 30, and there, it's fixed. Let's change the alpha on the buttons here, button up, down, left, and right. I'll just copy this down here. 
and change those interactives to alpha equals 0 0.01. And there's our game controller. Let's see, is it still working? Yes, up, left, go right, go down. Great. You might need to play around with the size of those buttons after you get it onto mobile. I know that's what I'm going to do, but for now it's working pretty great. The next thing we're going to do is hook up this controller to our Ninja. And then that will be next time. And thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful to you.